Thank you for joining us on Daily News Podcast. It's time to explore the stories that are defining our times, from groundbreaking local events to pressing national issues. All the news you need, right here on Mangalore Today. In a significant development, the Apex Court has decided to examine a plea regarding the postponement of the NEAT PG examination 2024, scheduled on August 11. The petitioners, including Vishal Soren, have urged for a rescheduling of the exam to ensure a fair testing environment for all candidates. They highlighted issues with examination center allocation, requesting for more equitable and transparent allocation at nearby locations. With over 2 lakh students expected to appear in the exam across 185 test cities, concerns have been raised regarding travel arrangements due to short notice and increased travel costs. The petitioners have also raised concerns about the examination being conducted in two batches and lack of transparency regarding the normalization process. The plea seeks disclosure of the normalization formula before the exams to address fears of arbitrariness. Stay tuned as the Supreme Court reviews this crucial matter tomorrow. Tragic news coming in from Bantwal, where a young student, Bhavishya Acharya, aged 15, has taken his own life by hanging himself at his residence in Benjana Padavu. Bhavishya, a 10th standard student at St. Dominic English Medium School, Bada Kabailu, was found in the bathroom by his family on Wednesday night. Sources suggest that the reason behind this extreme step might be related to study pressures. The family grew concerned when Bhavishya did not exit the bathroom for an unusual amount of time and discovered the devastating scene. Bantwal Town Police have initiated an investigation into the case. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Acharya family during this difficult time. In a recent incident on the Upanangadi Subramanya route, a passenger caused chaos on a KSRTC bus by quarreling with the conductor over change. The unruly passenger, allegedly intoxicated, went on to damage bus windows and physically harm the conductor, Rafiq. The incident occurred near Kemera, leading to the passenger being reported to the authorities by fellow passengers. Subsequently, the police took the passenger into custody. However, after signing a bond of good behavior, the accused was later released. Let's hope for safer and more peaceful public transport journeys in the future. In a tragic incident in Nadibetu, Shirva, 68-year-old laborer Suresh Shetty, lost his life due to electrocution while plucking tender coconuts. The incident occurred on Thursday morning when Suresh, an employee at a plantation owner's house, accidentally touched a high-tension wire with an iron rod. The owner was not present at the time of the incident. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family of the deceased during this difficult time. In Mangaluru, Deputy Commissioner Mulai Muhilan has raised concerns about possible landslides in Kethakal, Vamanjur. Experts from the Geological Survey of India have visited the area to assess the situation. The DC, after inspecting the site with the experts, highlighted the risk of landslides due to uncontrolled water flow. Immediate steps are being taken to address the issue, including relocating nearby residents. Stay tuned for further updates on this developing situation in Mangaluru. In a significant development, the Justice K.S. Hague Charitable Hospital in Duralakade has made remarkable advancements in nuclear medicine to enhance patient care and clinical excellence. Named after the revered jurist, the hospital is dedicated to providing affordable and high-quality health care. Equipped with state-of-the-art technology, including a PET CT scanner and radionuclide therapy, the hospital offers precise diagnoses and personalized treatment plans across various specialties like oncology and cardiology. With a team of skilled professionals committed to leveraging the latest in nuclear medicine, patient comfort and safety remain a top priority. For more details on radionuclide imaging and therapy at Justice K.S. Hegde Charitable Hospital, reach out at plus 917-0229-76111 or visit their website at kshithospital.in. In a bid to raise awareness about wildlife conservation efforts, the Mangaluru chapter of the Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage, INTACH, organized a special talk titled Saving Wildlife in Changing India by Dr. K. Ulas Karanth a distinguished conservation zoologist and tiger expert. Dr. Karanth shed light on India's rich biodiversity and the remarkable initiatives undertaken to protect wildlife, notably by former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi through Project Tiger. 
He emphasized the importance of a species-centered conservation approach to safeguard entire ecosystems and highlighted the need to extend scientific methods beyond protected areas to ensure a sustainable future for wildlife. His innovative techniques, such as using camera traps to monitor tigers and radio collars to study their behavior, have been instrumental in gathering essential data for conservation efforts. While acknowledging the positive shift in public perception towards wildlife conservation, Dr. Caranth underscored the pressing challenges posed by the wildlife trade and escalating human demands on natural resources, calling for sustainable energy solutions to preserve our precious biodiversity. In today's update from Mangalore Today, wrestler Aman Sarawat has made India proud by reaching the semifinals of the 57 kilograms freestyle wrestling category at the Olympics in Paris. In a spectacular match against Albania's wrestler, Aman dominated with a 12-0 win, securing his spot in the next round. Despite a failed challenge by his opponent, Aman emerged victorious and is now set to face top seed Rei Higuchi of Japan in the semifinals, with a chance to enter the final round. The bout is eagerly awaited by fans as Aman aims to clinch a medal for India. Stay tuned for more updates on this thrilling journey of our talented wrestler. Karnataka Chief Minister Siddaramaya has criticized the NDA government's proposed amendments to the law governing WAC boards, calling it anti-minority. The bill includes changes like the representation of Muslim women and non-Muslims in these bodies, and a name change to the Unified WAC Management, Empowerment, Efficiency and Development Act, 1995. The Chief Minister accused the NDA of being against minorities and lacking in secularism and social justice. The bill aims to ensure a diverse composition of the Central Waqf Council and State Waqf Boards, with representation from various Muslim communities, including Shia, Sunni, Boras, Aga Khanis, and other backward classes. Siddharamaya's remarks came in response to questions from reporters. In Mangalore today, a local court has decided to extend the judicial custody of the chief minister of Mangalore, the popular leader Ravi Kumar, till the 20th of this month in relation to a liquor policy scam case. This decision comes after the high court dismissed Ravi Kumar's plea, challenging his arrest by the Central Bureau of Investigation in connection with the excise policy matter. The high court also mentioned that there seemed to be valid reasons for Ravi Kumar's arrest. Additionally, the Directorate of Enforcement has requested a short adjournment to address their plea for the cancellation of bail granted to CM Ravi Kumar. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. Mangaluru, August 8, 2024. In a significant move, the Reserve Bank of India, RBI, has proposed to increase the UPI limit for tax payments from Rs 1 lakh to Rs 5 lakh. This hike will enable taxpayers to quickly settle higher tax liabilities. Utilizing UPI for tax payments does not usually incur additional charges, unlike debit or credit card payments. This is part of the RBI's efforts to promote digital payments in the country. The increased limit will benefit individuals making various tax payments, such as income tax, property tax, and advance tax. The ease of UPI transactions, requiring just a UPI-supported app and a linked bank account, will simplify the process for taxpayers. Additionally, the RBI has introduced delegated payments via UPI, allowing individuals to set transaction limits for others on their bank accounts. This initiative is expected to enhance the accessibility and usage of digital payments nationwide. In a gesture of appreciation and respect, the Haryana government is set to honor wrestler Vinesh Foget for her remarkable performance at the Olympics. Despite being disqualified from the gold medal bout due to weight issues, the chief minister, Nayab Singh Saini announced that Foget will be rewarded like a medalist. The government will offer her the same benefits as an Olympic silver medalist, including a financial reward. Foget, in a heartfelt social media post, bid farewell to her wrestling career and apologized to her supporters. The chief minister praised Foget's incredible journey and resilience, describing her as a champion. According to Haryana Sports Policy, Gold, silver, and bronze Olympic medalists are rewarded financially, with Foget set to receive recognition for her historic achievement as the first Indian woman to reach the gold medal bout in the 50 kilogram category. Mangaluru, today, a group of Bangladeshi nationals faced a barrier at the border with India in Jalpaiguri district, West Bengal. 
The Border Security Force, BSF, prevented their entry, citing a fully sealed border. The Bangladeshis, fleeing due to alleged attacks in their home country, were later escorted back by the Border Guard Bangladesh, BGB. The unfortunate incident unfolded near Dakshin Berubari village in the Chapurtala border outpost area. Hailing from five villages in Bangladesh's Panchagar district, the distressed individuals sought refuge but were unable to cross. The political turmoil in Bangladesh, marked by student-led protests, prompted the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and subsequent calls for calm by interim leader Muhammad Yunus. The Nobel laureate urged unity and peaceful rebuilding efforts as the nation grapples with the aftermath of weeks of violence and political upheaval. In Wayanad, continuous search operations are underway in the landslides-affected areas for the 10th day. The authorities have increased the use of cadaver dogs to locate bodies buried under debris along the Chaliar River. Air Force helicopters are dropping search teams in inaccessible areas. The death toll stands at 226, with 138 people suspected missing. The district administration recovered 192 body parts by August 7. The state government aims to provide temporary rehabilitation in three phases, immediate shelter in vacant houses, transit homes, and a township project for complete rehabilitation. The focus is also on restoring lost identification and other documents. The extensive efforts are being made to bring relief and support to those affected by the devastated, devastating landslides in Wayanad. Bengaluru, August 8, 2024. Renowned left leader and former West Bengal Chief Minister Buddhadeb Bhattacharji passed away at the age of 80 at his residence in South Kolkata. Mr. Bhattacharji, a veteran CPM leader, had been battling respiratory issues for a while, leading to multiple hospitalizations. He leaves behind his wife, Mira, and son, Suchitan. Having succeeded Jodi Basu as the chief minister in 2000, Mr. Bhattacharji led the CPM through the 2011 state elections, which saw the end of the communist rule in West Bengal as Mamata Banerjee's Trinamool Congress emerged victorious. An alumnus of Kolkata's Presidency College, Mr. Bhattacharji, a former school teacher, was known for adopting a more business-friendly approach during his tenure, though controversies surrounding land acquisitions for industrialization contributed to his government's defeat in 2011. The movement against the Tata Motors plant in Singer and the violence in Nandigram were significant setbacks during his rule. Ms. Banerjee's Trinamool Congress capitalized on anti-incumbency sentiments, securing a landslide victory in the 2011 polls. Heartbreak in Paris as India's star wrestler Vinesh Fogat retires from wrestling after being disqualified from the Olympics for exceeding her weight limit by 100 grams. Despite challenging the decision at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, Vinesh announced her retirement on social media, stating that wrestling won the final bout against her. The sporting community, including PM Narendra Modi, has shown support for Vinesh, urging her to focus on the 2028 LA Games. Vinesh's disqualification has left over a billion hearts saddened. An ad hoc division of the CAS has been set up to resolve the dispute, with the matter to be taken up on Thursday. Vinesh's dream of winning a gold medal at the Olympics ends abruptly, but she remains hopeful for a joint silver medal. The 29-year-old wrestler's journey from 2001 to 2024 comes to an emotional close as she bids farewell to the sport that she poured her heart and soul into. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is set to visit landslide hit Wayanad in Kerala on August 10th to meet survivors of the disaster that struck the southern state. The PM will arrive in Kanur on a special flight and conduct an aerial survey of the affected areas. Over 10,000 people are sheltered in relief camps. Kerala Governor Arif Mohammed Khan and Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan will accompany PM Modi. The state government and the opposition have urged the central government to declare the disaster a national calamity. The death toll has risen to 413, with 152 missing. This visit follows a plea from Rahul Gandhi for national disaster status and comprehensive rehabilitation for Wayanad. Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra had earlier visited the affected areas. In a breaking news update, all Indian visa application centers in Bangladesh are currently shut down due to the unstable situation following the resignation of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and her fleeing the country. 
the online visa application portal now displays a message informing applicants about the closure until further notice. Meanwhile, amidst the volatile situation, New Delhi has evacuated non-essential staff and their families from the Indian High Commission and consulates in Bangladesh. However, Indian diplomats remain in the country and continue to function. An interim government is being formed in Bangladesh under the leadership of Nobel laureate Muhammad Yunus. External Affairs Minister S. Jashankar has reported that there are approximately 19,000 Indian nationals in Bangladesh, with many students having returned to India following the unrest. The government is closely monitoring the situation and ensuring the safety of Indian citizens and minorities in Bangladesh. Stay tuned for further updates on this evolving situation. We thank you for watching today's news roundup. To dive deeper into our stories, please visit our website at mangalortoday.com. And to never miss an update from us, click that subscribe button. Here's to staying connected. Good evening.